Hello everyone, I hope you are well. Now I'm going to be doing a series of healings, meditations, information all rolled into one on each of the chakras. Many of you have been asking for them over the couple of years I've been here, so it's about time I did something. So we're going to start with the root chakra today and on this we are looking at that one there, that nice red colour, okay. So I would like you to do these in a whole system, so starting at the root and working up to the crown. I will also be doing some for the transpersonal chakras, the new age ones that are out of the body as well. So eventually when they're all up, you can go to whichever one. You can do them in a line, upwards, downwards, whatever you feel. So this is not specifically any type of Reiki. There will be Reiki involved with it but I have pulled out all of the tools associated with root chakras. So I will cover angelic Reiki, Egyptian Reiki, Celtic Reiki, Oceanic Reiki, and Yusui Reiki as well. Okay. We've got oils here. We've got all sorts of things. Okay, so just settle yourself down and start to relax want you to grow your roots out of your shoulders, your hips and your root chakra which is at the bottom of your spine. If you clench your pelvic floor, the muscle underneath you, clench it and you can feel where it is. It's probably about two to three, three, four inches up inside you and when you clench your pelvic floor that is when you can feel it, okay? So, growing those roots out of your root, out of your shoulders, your hips, and your feet is a very good way to ground to begin any energy healing at all. And then I'd like you to imagine a candle flame at the center of your being and grow that flame outwards to the front of you, behind you, and above and below you. And we're going to push out anything that is not yours. So that involves any residue from situations happening around you. And make that ball nice and big. It won't be completely round because you're quite tall. So it probably will be in a tear drop, but with smooth ends, no corners, so that nothing can get in. Okay. All right. So I'd like you start to visualize the color of red brown, black, grey, tan, all of those earthy colours. You might even see bits of greenery and yellow and blue. The earth holds all colours, doesn't it? But as you can see from this, now I've got lots of books here, that this is called a bijou right in the middle, a seed. So, I'm going to just start clearing as I'm talking, okay? So, the key issues for this chakra, that it's out of balance. You may have issues with sexuality, lust and obsession. The main colour is red. It is associated with the reproductive system. And it helps you with the inner aspects of grounding and spiritual energies. 
for the mental action it is stability for the emotional action it is sensuality and for the spiritual action it is security so this will be working on things like your family as well your job your career your home your stability in the world okay so the health issues that can be associated with the Mulhadhara chakra are issues linked to the endocrine glands in women these can be the ovaries which help promote estrogen and menstrual cycles for men these can be the testes which produce the hormone testosterone which develops and maintains the male characteristics of production of your little swimmers. Okay, so I'm going to take a smoky quartz. This is a very dark smoky quartz. And I have another smoky quartz here. Okay, so that is another one. And I'm going to pop that palm stone right underneath you right now. Moving that down and placing that underneath your chair. And I'm just going to swirl out, pull away, clearing this. I want you to let everything be drawn out by this. And think of all those insecurities that you wish to get rid of. And if this is out of kilter, then your digestion will probably be out of sync as well. So if you have an underactive root, you may be a little bit constipated. If you have an overactive, you might be a little bit loose in that department. Okay. And the foods you eat obviously do affect this as well. Okay. So we want to get you into balance with this chakra. This is the foundation of you. So I'm just going to hold up my yin and yang stones and I'm just going to Hold those either side of your thighs. So the top of your thighs, the outside of your thighs, level with the Mulhadada, the root chakra. And I'm now just going to rotate them three times. And then I'm going to draw that imbalance down your legs to your knees down your lower legs to your ankles along your foot and out of the hole in the bottom of your foot right in the arch okay we're going to do that a couple of times down towards your knee, down your shin, to the ankle and forward and down out of the chakra in the bottom of your foot. And finally, because these legs are all part of the down towards the knee, down the shin and calf, to the ankle, forward and out. Okay. So I'm going to hold up some tools and I'm going to use some oils as well. So the first thing I'm going to do 
So I want you to imagine a tree. We're going to have two trees involved with this. The first one, because we are doing things distantly, is going to be the yew tree. So I'm just going to draw that right the way down. Yeho. 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 And this is the distant healing symbol for Celtic Reiki. Yew trees are so ancient, up to 2,000 years sometimes. So they reach across all of the timelines. Yeho. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'm going to draw in the oak tree. Yeah. Yeah. Oak of the Druid. the strength and the fortitude of this tree, sometimes known as the thunder tree as well. Yeah. Yeah. And just imagine looking directly at the trunk and then follow the line down into the ground. And you'll notice that that stabilizes you, it helps you feel a little bit better. Okay. Okay, so the oils that I would use to ground yourself could be something like vetriver. Literally smells like wet earth. Patchouli, that grounding, slightly woody, minty, Indian kind of smell. We all know that. And I would say to you, if you do not like this smell, then you need the oil. And one of my favourites, cypress, that lovely zesty smell. I'll just open that for you and have a, have a smell. The smelling and the woodiness. You could visualize the tall cypress trees and the island of Corfu. Wonderful green islands reaching up from the ground to the heavens. Okay. Now this will be your Kundalini, so the Kundalini can reach up and move around your chakras like that. Another thing that we open up, the master symbol, the Nautilus from Oceanic Reiki. And this is an animal that has survived countless mass extinctions because it can swim so deep because the structure of its shell does not crush. I'll just draw that in again, the Nautilus. And the lines that we emit from the centre will balance you to the north, to the east, to the south and the west. And here is a different, a different one. And I will place this below people's feet. I shall also, I would also rotate that to soothe. And we could scoop out, so scooping out at the root. So just place your feet on that now. As I clear again, and I'm going to clear your root with this limpet shell from Oceanic Reiki. So I'm going to hold it like that underneath you, and I'm literally going to rotate it to siphon off any chi. Pull 
pull as well because limpets suction onto things, don't they? Just letting everything go, letting those worries go, clearing that root chakra, that Mahadara chakra. The animal for this energy center is the elephant. So you can think how sturdy and strong elephants are, how they remember everything. And that is because your root holds everything pretty much, doesn't it? It holds, holds your stability. The root chakra relates to family, balance, holistic health, abundance, security and stability, grounding, survival, instinct, your material needs, your ancestral line, even if you don't know them, you will have four sets of ancestors. Trust, creating appropriate boundaries. prosperity, physical well-being, vitality and rejuvenation. I'm just going to draw that SAQ in. And pushing that down now. So Ganesh would be a wonderful deity to use for this energy center, a Hindu remover of obstacles. In Hinduism we would pray to him first and then we would petition the other gods. I actually ask for his help every time I start my sitar practice. You can also balance and sing to the chakras. So the tone for this and the song that you would sing, that's a C, that's a C sharp actually. C. You can just use oils as well. So you could use myrrh. This is the one I don't like, so this is the one I need the most. Myrrh to balance. And cedar wood can also balance. Just have a little breathe in of that cedar wood. would also balance. One is from the UK and one is from Madagascar. So just imagine both of those, let's rest them under your feet. And don't forget 
the good old bog standard stone, your normal stone that can help ground you and balance you. You can hold that, put it in your lap, or put it under you as well. This has come from the beach, but any normal stone will work. And finally, I forgot to mention the next god I would petition after Ganesh would be Shiva. And the Shiva Lingam stone I have improvised with the base, I'm just using a candle. So Shiva. And Pavarti. And you may find these in a lot of temples, central part of temples. I have indeed been to a shop in Glastonbury where there has been one the height of my shoulder. And just looking at that, I think you may, I can feel that in my root chakra working and hopefully you can as well. And I think finally we shall shine in some carnelian. So filling up now that Malhadara chakra with the beautiful color of carnelian. Red jasper would be wonderful as well. So just shining that in or positioning those two stones. Perhaps on the creases of your thigh. Or in between your knees as you're sitting or lying down. All good things to channel in. So I'm just going to amplify that energy by spiraling in. To the root. I'm just going to angle this down now and just feel that being absorbed in. Okay, if you wanted to ask angels, I would primarily work with Angel Sandalphon. Look at him there playing his Native American flute, really earthy, grounding, balancing music. I do play Native American flute, but I haven't had the guts to play it on here yet. So if you play an instrument, get yourself a little flute, go out somewhere into the wild, play to the animals. I actually go to churchyards and play my flute because no one's going to complain to me there, are they? I have a captive audience. And that is how I remember the ancestors. I go to my grandfather's church and I choose a yew tree to sit underneath and I just play. So drumming, that would be another way. failing all of these if you don't have any of these tools just wear red or brown a nice color red can also 
also work in the same way, okay? So I'm going to ask your guides, your ancestors, your helpers to imprint this healing in and this from this informational video. I want you to visualize those trees again, those big strong trees. Perhaps there's two in front of you, the yew tree and the dewy air, the oak. And just visualize the trunks of those trees directly opposite your eye line and then travel downwards into the earth with your eye line feeling your roots spread out and we ask that this healing and this informational video work within everyone who watches this and that the information is instilled into them so that they can help themselves in the future So I would advise you to have a drink of water just to let this informational healing for the root, the base, the Mulhadara chakra to be instilled in you and to work well for you. Okay. Namaste.